Hi there, everyone. Welcome. So we're just going to wait for people to join um, at the moment. So we'll just give them half a minute or so before we get started. In the meantime, uh, for anyone waiting, if you want to share in the in the chat window where you're joining from, which organisation you're from, that'd be really great to see. Yes, come and say hi <laughs> to Marie. Oh, hello, Guy. Cool, nice. So uh, I think I'll, I'll kick things off now. Um, so good afternoon and good morning to those of us joining um, from the US and welcome to today's webinar uh, hosted by 360 Learning and Hi Bob on how L&D and HR teams can keep people engaged and retain top talent. So my name is Freddie. I'm the content lead uh, for the UK here at 360 Learning. Um, so, you know, we've really seen how the pandemic has kind of caused employees to, to really reevaluate re their priorities. Um, and that includes how they kind of see their relationship with work as well. And that's caused a lot of people to kind of turn their back on jobs that they no longer enjoy, you know, whether that's due to burnout, uh, poor wages, lack of fulfillment. Um, and for many employers, that's really kind of acted as a wake up call uh, to provide better internal mobility options, flexibility and learning opportunities to, to stop people walking out the door, basically. Um, so today we're going to talk about how to give employees those opportunities to move into more rewarding work um, and really address the benefits of promoting talent from within. So as I said earlier, we'd love to know uh, where you're joining from in the world, what organisation you're from, what team you're from. So please feel free to tell us in the chat window and let us know. Um, so I'm now going to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, and so in today's session, we're going to hear from Mark Douch, Talent Acquisition Manager for Europe at Hi Bob. Mark, if you want to wave and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, and I'd also like to introduce David James, Chief Learning Officer at 360 Learning. David, if you want to say hello as well. Yeah, thanks, Freddie, and uh, and hello, everybody. Cool. So great. Let's jump into the topic um, of the day. So how L and D and HR teams can keep people engaged and retain top talent. So in terms of the specific topics um, that we'll be covering, David is going to kick things off by setting the scene in terms of how people's relationship with work has changed and what that means for employers, uh, L and D and HR teams. He and, then, he and Mark are then going to talk about the role of collaborative learning for employee retention um, before moving on to how upskilling from within can help to increase employee satisfaction. Uh, then Mark is going to lead the discussion around the impact of an employer brand can have on people actually staying on board and then moving into the topic of motivating and engaging workers. Um, so we will be doing a Q&A at the end of the session. So feel free to submit your questions in the question tab as you go, not to be confused with the chat tab. Um, and we'll also be running some polls as well during the discussion. So please take a look at those and again, uh, submit your answers as we go. So David, I'll, I'll hand over to you. Lovely. Thanks, Freddie. Um, so uh, so uh, Freddie's mentioned there that uh, we've done a, uh, a survey on the, uh, the Great Resignation and had 784 um, responses from, uh, from the United Kingdom alone um, that, that explored in some depth uh, a change in relationship that, uh, that they found with work. And of course, we'll give you some of those headlines today and a discussion around uh, some of the, uh, the analysis. Uh, but we would definitely recommend that you, uh, that you take a look uh, for yourself at, uh, at this. Uh, and as, uh, as Freddie mentioned, uh, please do uh, get involved in the conversation. Uh, 
Um, we've got some uh, some polls to gain your thoughts as well. But I think it's in the richness of, of each of our contexts that we'll truly seek to understand what is happening. Uh, but also uh, what I think is, uh, is particularly powerful, uh, the role that we can play uh, as HR and learning and development teams uh, in um, uh, in addressing some of this. Now, that's not to say that it's all down on us. And, uh, and I've had plenty of discussions on uh, on LinkedIn myself uh, where people explaining that it's not all down to L&D. But I think that, uh, that, that what we will see is that there is a huge opportunity. And I'd like to say that rather than laying blame, a huge opportunity for learning and development teams to, to uh, increase our impact uh, in, uh, in organizations to address this. If we go on to the, uh, the next slide, please, Marie. Because it could be said uh, that, uh, that if there was one thing to, uh, to pull out from this is that, that people are no longer prepared to do jobs they hate. Um, it's, uh, it's quite a powerful statement. Of course, uh, there are many of us in more privileged positions to be able to, uh, to make decisions to, to leave roles. But I think that it's important to state as well that I don't think any decision is taken lightly to leave a role. Uh, and so it's going to be rubbing up against our values, whatever those are, uh, to be making such a, uh, um, a, a strong statement. If we can look on to the, go on to the, uh, the next slide. Uh, and if we go into some of the detail here, um, so we said that we had uh, 784 responses uh, uh, on this, but looking at those who quit, um, this is this is an important part. So not people who were thinking about it, uh, but those who actually quit. We can see that 21 percent of those cited unfulfillment within the role uh, as, a, as a as a reason why they quit. And 23 uh, percent stated burnout uh, and then a little bit lower down at low pay. But there are a couple of areas that I think that uh, are, uh, are particularly crucial, uh, and that is uh, learning opportunities. Uh, where it said uh, about, uh, we have a look on here, um, uh, I wasn't learning uh, or growing anymore. But we could also group that in with um, uh, no obvious short to midterm prospects for progression. I think it's important to recognize that when, uh, when employees, not learning and development folks, uh, are talking about opportunities to grow uh, and develop, they're not necessarily looking at our formal learning opportunities that we would categorize. They're looking at actual growth as well, which can happen in stretch assignments. It can happen with uh, with testing ourselves out uh, in different areas, as well as um, stepping up into uh, into a different role or perhaps sideways into a different role to grow actual new skills and, uh, and knowledge. Uh, there's something on this slide that, uh, that that isn't stated. But again, I've been, uh, Marie shared the link to uh, to the uh, the actual survey. But 38% of people who resigned asked about internal mobility options, but none were available. And 35% didn't bother asking because they didn't think their employer would give them what they wanted. Now, that's 73% of people. Now, another 25% of people said that they left and it didn't matter what options there were available to them. And I think that that's what I mentioned before, that we're not going to learn it this can't land on the lap of learning and development and hr to say that we we're, we're able to solve uh, the uh, the repercussions of the great resignation but there is so much more that we can do uh, about uh, rallying the cause of uh, of uh, of employees uh, to uh, to highlight if not uh, look to engineer internal mobility uh, opportunities or something that i'm uh, particularly passionate about and that is developing the workforce to such an extent that they are unignorable that you have a, a plethora of options uh, to as, as far as uh, bench strength is concerned so that you've got a, a great um, problem to be solved inside your organization of finding places for great people now, this sets the scene about the engagement crisis that's taking place, and this should act as a wake up call for, uh, for employers everywhere. Uh, and as I said, uh, L&D teams have the power to contribute to decreasing these quit rates and retaining talent. But perhaps that's enough uh, uh, from me just for a moment. We'd love to get you involved because we can set the scene all we like. Uh, I wonder if, Marie, you wouldn't mind going on to, to the next slide. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. Have you seen uh, an increased uh, um, in quit rates at your organization in the last 18 months. So have you seen, uh, and we've got a, we've got a poll. So if you go down to, uh, to the polls, you'll be able to, uh, to see that. 
about you, Mark. Um, I'm not going to say uh, distinctly within Hi Bob, as I wouldn't be saying inside 360. But uh, as far as your network's concerned and your friends, have you have you noticed an increase in uh, in folks uh, quitting? Um, yeah, I think either either doing it or seriously considering mm. doing it. Um, you know, if you, if you talk about it as a a market trend in general, mm. then then yes, you know, I think that um, is interesting that the poll, right? One of those kind of biggest single points was um, burnout, like my job is too stressful, mm. you know? And I think that is very reflective of, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? That that coincides with the other, the other, one of the other points, which was only 10% were saying they wanted to continue working fully remotely and the employer wouldn't let them. I think, you know, there is a, the, the lines between, work and home have become blurred almost to the point of being non-existent mm. through the last kind of two years and that is forcing a lot of people not, not forcing it's it's giving a lot of people the opportunity to reevaluate. you know when work and home are almost becoming one and the same yeah. you know it's very easy to to sit and evaluate what you want or the things you'd like to do to your house or whatever you've now got the same ability to make that focus in on what you want to gain from from work right mm. um and and we all know that the market I, I i did a talk on this the other day you know to the end of february there's something almost like nearly nearly one and a half million open vacancies in the uk to the end of 2022 yeah. so if candidates are thinking about it um and and they want to make that just the decision there's plenty of choice for them to go elsewhere yeah. so you know it's not it's not just the oh, can I, you know, should I leave? It's the well, mm. if I want to leave, I can I can go and find somewhere else. So yeah, I think we've we've definitely noticed as a trend, right? More and more people mm. thinking about or actually taking the decision to go elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting point there. We we could we could point to the wisdom of crowds here. We're not talking about just a few people. This is a phenomena. People are backing themselves to leave their current job, which isn't doing it for them at the present time. Yeah, uh, to go find another one. Uh, I think that uh, it's a. Uh, uh, a very interesting phenomena. Uh, do we have um, a, um, a, a response to the polls? We go public with that. Oh, should I feel for a little bit more? I uh... <laughs> so so what what I think that this is also consistent with Mark is that there was a, a book written by Reed Hoffman called The Alliance about a decade ago, and it was talking about how younger talent in the workforce aren't looking for um, jobs for life anymore. It's funny how organisations weren't offering jobs for life. Then the the next wave of employees didn't want a job for life. They were actually looking for tours of duty. They were looking for something that uh, offered yeah. them the opportunity for an experience for growth. And then they'll say, see you later, um, because yeah. they've got what they wanted. And I wonder whether it's taken something like this, I, because, of course, this you can't just put it on the younger generation. I suppose they, they are going to be exposed uh, perhaps to uh, uh, to what's going on in society without the baggage that, that perhaps uh, us, <laughs> us older ones uh, will have. But maybe we've caught up with them to say, yeah, do you know what? We, we think we'll. Um, go uh, be in it for the experience rather than just for the uh, for the for the the drudge of the day to day as well. I don't know whether that that lands with you. Yeah, I mean, this actually this this links back to a conversation I had just this morning. Right, mm. we were talking about the fact that you know, as you say, there's that shift now that people people don't necessarily you don't necessarily think of it as a job. Mm. You think of it as a task, right? So, yeah. so what is the what is the project or the 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 aim of me coming into your organization and doing this particular role? Like mm. the outcome is X, and then you know I think you say you, you you see that in average tenure of of organizations. You know, people are generally staying eighteen months, two years before mm. cycling through. You know, we've said this for a long time, but I think it's more true now than ever. Is you know people in 20 years time we'll have a, a cv that looks more like a portfolio of assignments mm. rather than career time spent within you know one one organization so yeah. um and, and I, yeah i think the the last two years has, has, has exacerbated the obvious i think mm. if anything you know all, all this has done is accelerated 
a trend that we were seeing anyway. It's yeah. just exploded in one go because mm. of the situation that we all found ourselves in. Yeah. 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 So we can see that there's actually 59% of the audience have said, yes, they have seen an increase in quit rates, 22% uh, no change and 19% no. So there's a clear, clear mm. winner there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, it is interesting. And of course, I think that uh, as the report states that uh, that that this is starker in some areas rather than uh, rather than others, uh, although I'm sure that uh, that everybody's um, certainly aware of, uh, of folks who are uh, uh, who are uh, resigning without perhaps necessarily having somewhere else to go. So thank you very much, everybody, for getting involved there. Um, uh, uh, we will um, we'll have another poll very shortly uh, to gain your uh, your thoughts as we uh, as we progress here. Um, but but it, as we start um, the moving the conversation to what can we do uh, about this, uh, I want to ask the question here: Why is adopting peer-driven collaborative learning critical to retaining talent? Now, um, uh, I'm, I'm not always one for for jumping straight to to the solution here. But as a conversation point, I think that uh, that that this. Uh, what I like about this is it's counter to what the learning and development profession have been doing for so long without demonstrable results. Uh, so, so this is peer-driven learning as opposed to off-the-shelf or generic solutions. Um, now, if I, if I, you know, anybody who, you know, who knows anything about uh, uh, what I think about learning and development, and, <laughs> and those of you who don't, don't subscribe to my, my podcast might think, well, why on earth would I? But uh, um, uh, I've made it very public that, uh, that, that when the solution is a generic off-the-shelf um, uh, program or content, I always think you don't know what the problem is, uh, because the only problem that solves is that you didn't have that before. Uh, whereas employees themselves have said loud and clear during this survey that they would self-direct their own learning in their own development if they uh, if they um, had the opportunity so to progress their own career. And yet in learning and development, engagement in online learning is notoriously low. Those things don't 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 add up. So so when uh, a, um, uh, a a vendor might say that they have ten million pieces of content, and yet the 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 engagement is still low, and that there are still skills back gaps, and there are still people leaving. Uh, many in learning and development will look and they will say that our people don't like online learning, or even worse, that they don't know how to learn. And yes, people, they do say that. Uh, whereas really, learning and development are not providing what people need in order to fulfill their work goals. And again, that's really critical. It's about work goals, not learning goals. Whereas peer-driven collaborative learning helps focus uh, learning and development on solving real problems. Uh, if you are creating content within or providing bridges between those who have the know-how and those who need the know-how, then you need to do that deliberately and intentionally. And you need to do that off the back of analysis so that you understand the problems that need to be solved so that you can connect uh, the uh, those who need that knowledge and know-how to either the people who have that or the content that has that. It has you very deliberately solved that problem. Whereas so many silver bullet solutions are procured without any analysis and on the basis that, well, if there's 10 million pieces of content and there's only 10,000 people in our organization, then there must be something for everybody. And the only problem is, is that none of that content relates to any roles in your organization any of your stakeholders, any of your customers whatsoever. And it's almost a, an, an act of neglect to think that, that, that you are able to buy said solutions without doing any of that analysis. One of the other important factors I think that, uh, that, that um, uh, collaborative learning allows here is that you retain the connection between development and culture. Uh, so much of learning and development, especially with generic off the shelf content, is that they are isolated skill sets or knowledge bases that are remiss of any content. And you see this, whether it's communication skills, presentation skills or whether it's well-being. It's just an educational uh, uh, experience or content. But but trying to remove that from the, the actual experience of people from the culture within your organization, I think, is like trying to remove the egg from a cake. There are, it's actually baked in. So you can't teach people about communicating within your organization without them understanding your organization. And so the most effective way of doing that is to both understand what it is that people are trying to do that they're not able to do easily or effectively and connect them with people, knowledge and know-how that already exists within your organization 
of so that they are they learn how to do that effectively here it kind of emanates from from the question how do you do the right things around here now the right things can be uh, defined by the line manager the employees by peers but the how things are done around here this is the bridge for me. This is where you've got somebody who believes that there is a learning and development offering for them in the organization that helps them progress there. And then you've got generic content, which we know. I mean, people are savvy in organizations. You open it up and you know that it, it doesn't lend itself at all to your organization. It's not really helping them. It's just there as a stopgap, perhaps, between uh, when learning and development feel as if there could be a face-to-face a -face or a live virtual in-person um, uh, experience. So, so the, the collaborative peer learning approach is something that can deliberately bridge that gap between those who know and are successful in your organization and those who perhaps now uh, or at any particular time uh, during their tenure do want to progress uh, and those people that that are, are leaving organizations because they feel that there is not that way. It's kind of uh, the way I like to see it is that uh, that we might tell people that they have the keys to the castle because there is a need, there is an LS filled full of content or there is an exhaustive curricula, but they can't actually get into the castle. That key doesn't fit and there's no active um, uh, invitation to invite them in. They're just standing on the outsides waiting to come in, but without without the real know how. Uh, of how to do so. And the last part of that is skills. There is so much talk in the market about skills gaps. Uh, and in any given organization, there are, uh, there are um, not just pronounced skills gaps, but these will be increasing as 80% of the, the workforce of 2030 are already in the workforce today. We are inevitably going to go through an upskilling process where the answer isn't people showing interest in generic content and then bridging the gap themselves between content and doing the job. We're going to have to be a lot more deliberate about that uh, in order to, to plug those gaps, which leads me on nicely to the next question. And I'd love, again, I'd love you, uh, uh, you to get involved, please, in the polls. Uh, and I'll, I'll ask you, do you have a formalized upskilling program at your organization? Uh, one that, uh, as we've mentioned before in the, uh, with the, the uh, survey results, would let employees know that there is a place for them to appease them, as they've stated in the, uh, the, the survey themselves, to self-direct their learning because they know that it's leading to progression within that organization, not necessarily just generically uh, um, provide them with, uh, with, with some knowledge, but almost acts as a, as a path and a ladder. Please let us know uh, your, uh, your thoughts. So at the moment, 60% uh, don't have an upskilling program. 15% mm -hmm. um, so do have an upskilling program, but it's not perfect. Um, and, and the same again, 15% are currently building out a, an upskilling program. Great. And yeah, and 9% uh, do have a for formalized upskilling program. Fabulous. Uh, it seems as if there's a, there's an intention there. I, I um, uh, without giving away the um, uh, which organisation it is, all I would say is that they are in a. Oh, that will make this uh, vague enough. They are they are in a sector that desperately needs to keep hold of its talent. So that that tells you that perhaps it's not the most alluring of sectors. Uh, and because they know that they can't rely on people coming from the outside, the amount of resource they have internally to actually build capability from within is extraordinary. It's funny how when you need to, they'll apply not just resource, but they've got their, they've got a systematic approach to it uh, where perhaps it's not so urgent. I'm seeing more and more people buying off the shelf and thinking that'll do. Um, which is uh, which is probably which where we're going now. So, Marie, if you wouldn't mind getting us on to uh, to the next slide, thank you, and thanks everybody for uh, for getting involved in the poll again. Um, uh, and if and if you've got any questions or comments, please, uh, if I can remind you to uh, to put your uh, your your comments in the uh, the comments or in the chat function, and your questions in the uh, in the question function. So, how can upskilling from within increase employee satisfaction and close skills gaps? Well, 
Uh, well, first of all, I've already talked about the status quo. I've been in learning and development since the late 1990s. And uh, uh, and so I've seen uh, the advent of LMSs, of suites of content. The world's been safe from boring e-learning. Uh, I've seen immersive um, uh, videos, um, sorry, um, interactive videos come and go. We've seen AR and VR. I've seen serious games. I've seen gamification. These are all off the shelf uh, solutions that are going to be the silver bullet that changes the game this time. But that they're sold on the premise that that, that they will engage employees and, and they don't. And the reason it doesn't is because it doesn't solve their problems. This great resignation survey helps to outline what it is, the pro the problems that they are looking to solve. You've got people who, uh, you've got 73% um, uh, of people who either asked and were rebuffed in terms of social mobility, uh, sorry, uh, mobility within their organization, or they didn't even ask because they didn't think that it was available. So you've got, you've got three quarters of the workforce in any given organization, uh, according to this uh, survey, who would be willing to engage here. And as I said, they would be willing to self-direct their learning if they thought that there was an opportunity to uh, to learn here. So, so, so in terms of an upskilling program from within, uh, how it can uh, increase employee satisfaction, and close the skills gap, what it does, it helps people to navigate their organization and connect those who need to know with the local know-how. In another organization I worked with a few years back in which they were, they'd, they'd aimed at building uh, digital capability from inside because um, uh, turnover was so low within the organization. They did help bridge that gap with uh, with assessments and then custom built resources that help people to plot a path. It was hugely successful when I went to visit their uh, their offices uh, right in the um, the uh, the entrance hall. They had a, a huge picture of what they called their local maximums. They turned celebrities into their contributors. No word of a lie because they were solving the actual problems that the organization faced. We took another customer through um, uh, to, to, to show them what they could be doing and the one and one of our those customers asked us well how do you know what the biggest problems are in your organization now those are chalk and cheese one of those uh, one of those customers knew exactly uh, what um, what problems they were trying to solve and the other one didn't even know where to where to find those out um, but uh, but of course, if you do understand even just a, a small uh, a modicum of what the problems are, then you can go about finding that. Uh, and of course, understanding what the problems are is probably the biggest part of uh, of any learning and development development initiative, because without doing so, you're just buying generic content, you're buying generic generic skills taxonomies, and the vendors are telling you what the priority skills are that your people need to learn. Again, without analysis. Because of course they sell the uh, the content as well, but but the only way to jump out of this hamster wheel is by doing the analysis ourselves, understanding what actual skills gaps uh, are in your organisation, and then providing resources that help to bridge that gap, as well as other mechanisms such as communities, so that you can tap into the knowledge and know how. Uh, that exists within your organization. Sky, for example, um, they uh, they did away with their e-learning and their training programs for, for managers because they went with light touch resources that address the actual um, uh, unfamiliar situations and challenges that managers faced as they transitioned into managers. And they run um, high, low touch uh, workshops, regular workshops to talk about distinct areas where they would bring people together, those who didn't know with those who knew to create conversations, uh, which were much greatly, much more greatly uh, engaged with and attended than previously, because it's only about the priorities of the individuals and not uh, about what learning and development had assumed those, uh, those learning needs would be. Um, Mark, would you like to uh, to uh, to take on uh, the the uh, the next area? Yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I guess this this is yeah probably a bit more clickable, I suppose. From so in in the talent acquisition space, you know, we're um, we're focused on obviously finding the right people to bring them into the organisation, but you know, retention. Uh, retention of those people is very important for me and my teams and you know the work that we do because obviously the more that people stay the less we have to go and replace them 
uh, which which means less work for TA. Hooray! Um, and you know, I think that comes it does come back to um, you know the employer brand is 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 important to bring the people in the door, uh, but it also has to. <laughs> Um, the story has to continue like you have to what what you're selling in the shop has to match what you've put on the sh display in the window because if it doesn't then you're not the brand isn't going to keep the employees on board because it's a it's a miss sell right it's not accurate um so the 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 start of a you know you you should you should if you don't have an employer brand and you're thinking how do i get one start with your employees that you already have right because um uh i'm going to assume that the people that you've already hired are people that you want in your business and you want to keep and then you want to go and capture more of them so to capture more of those people you need to understand what it is that or the ones you already have on board right so um having a very strong in, engaging your current employees to build your brand will will remind them and reinforce the reasons as to why they're here in the first place which should help to <laughs> to, to keep them on board um and um you know it, it that they'll when when they see new people entering the business who who I don't I think using the phrase like them is a is a is a bit of a misdirection because you don't you don't need carbon copies of people. So your your let me rephrase that. Your brand will will set out quite clearly what or should set out quite clearly your your values as an organization. You know, what are the what are the what are the characteristics in people that you would like to see to, to make people successful? Values are ingrained in people from when they're children, right? It doesn't matter your background. Values values mean different things to different people but anyone from anywhere can 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 share values right so so that's what you want to focus on when 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 current employees see people coming into the organization that share their values then they again naturally they feel more aligned to to the brand right so um the keep <laughs> keeping the employees on board uh you know there's a there's a there's a business reason for it of course there is um you know we could link it back to the lnd thing you know the the, the 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 training and investment you spend into bringing ramping your new hires up and bringing them up to speed you know that's an investment that you want to make sure that you make for and, and and can keep within your organization for for as long as possible um there's that good phrase online that you keep seeing, right? And it's like, you know, the CFO says, well, what's the point of training up these people if they're going to leave? Well, imagine if we don't train them up and they stay, you know, like you, you, the, the invest, you, you have to make the investment and you want it to last as, as, as long as possible. Um, you need a strong brand to maintain that affinity for those employees with the organization. Um, you know, it, it helps minimize, um, some of those areas on the on on the graph at the beginning, right? Maybe there isn't at that moment in time in your organization a clear a, a clear development pathway. Maybe they don't feel that they have as much capability to self learn. But the the brand can help negate that because if they they feel very strongly about the mission and the purpose and the value of the the organization and what it's doing for, for its customers or kind of you know people everyone everyone likes a, a company with a purpose right if there's 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 that there's that hook that people want to see from organizations now not just as a consumer but also as an employee so your brand needs to capture that like essence um because if some of this other stuff that you know maybe you're a new organization maybe you're just starting out some of these things you you can't build or 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 have from from day one so the the brand and giving people that kind of north star will will help to kind of give you keep the people whilst giving you the time to focus on putting in some of this more formalized stuff that um you know can, can enrich them from a development point of view uh whilst they're with you as well
Great. So I think we're just going to move into the last discussion um, point now, which is around employee engagement. Um, Mark, I don't know if you just want to talk through um, this poll and we'll, we'll get the, the audience's views on that. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good to know, right, if people have um, or do you feel that you, uh, <laughs> within your organisation, you know, you have an effective employee engagement strategy. Now, I take this poll with a pinch of salt because I guess it's a little bit subjective as to um, yeah, very engaged versus somewhat engaged means different things to, to different people. Right. So I guess you use your better judgment, um, but it would be, yeah, it'd be interesting to know as L and D and HR professionals in the room, you know, what are you, what, what's the kind of barometer reading that you get um, in, in terms of, in terms of engagement? I mean, personally, right. Whilst people are answering the poll, I think if, if you don't have one, you need to get one <laughs> because, um, you know, like, like we mentioned earlier, right, when we talk about that, you know, great, great resignation, great reevaluation, that's, uh, I read something the other day, uh, another survey elsewhere, 80% of candidates will want to know and, and understand the company culture as, as kind of the biggest factor in their decision making around whether or not they'll accept an offer, right? So, and and that that culture and engagement are are intertwined, right? So, if eighty percent of candidates, if if they don't feel like they have an idea of 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 what it's like inside your business, and that comes back to that engagement piece, right? Then you could be missing out on you could be missing out on people even coming into the organisation, and that's that's part of the reason why people are thinking about quitting because this isn't in place. So it's, it's a, it's a risk factor from both sides. Absolutely. So we've got 53% uh, who think, who say that their employee engagement strategy is somewhat engaged and the strategy could be better. Uh, 25% very engaged, 20% hard time engaging employees. So that just gives a, a bit of an insight um, as to there. So yeah, I think that's a, a good point to just jump into this discussion point a little bit more around how to motivate and engage people to uh, basically decrease the quit rates in the organization yeah yeah and it's kind of interesting then that you say kind of over half are saying mm, with 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 we're sort of there but we we could be doing more um and and i think that is it's very reflective of where we are as a, a you know a kind of let's say society that you know uh in regards to there's there's still a bit of catching up that most organizations need to do now in kind of understanding that say that that balance of power between employer and employee is is shifting you know uh employers don't hold all the cards anymore <laughs> um and as an employee you know, we all feel much more comfortable about holding our organisations to account in, in in certain ways, right? Um, I mean, it's almost an obvious answer to the question. You know, I mean, if you don't motivate and engage your workers, like then they'll then they'll leave. Uh, you know, but I think in in the past we we maybe we've sort of taken it. I think I think in the past as. Uh, in, and you know, making sweeping generalizations here as a society we almost take employees for granted right um well they should be thankful that you know they're getting a paycheck like we're keeping you know helping to keep a roof over their head blah, blah 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 you know um that why is that not good enough for people but like linked to at the start of the conversation we we know through the the opportunity in the market at the moment that if people you know, you've got a very small window, you've got a much smaller window of opportunity nowadays than you used to have to sort some of this sort of stuff out because the market for the demand that, that people are seeing or needing in their in their in their workforces is not slowing down. If anything, it just keeps the, it just keeps getting bigger. So the, the window of opportunity you have as an organization to ensure that you are motivating and engaging your workforce. Is, is, is closing because if you don't do it it's not going to take them very long to find another opportunity it, talk from personal experience you know we talk to so many candidates day in day out 
nine out of every 10 people that we speak to, even in that first conversation after they've, you know, they've made an application or we've reached out to them. Are you talking to other companies? Yes. Right. And within two weeks, they'll have, they'll have offers on the table. They'll have things to consider. Those people are already working. They may be people that are in your organization right now. And with this hybrid remote working, you know, people don't need to take half a day off to go and have an interview anymore, right? Block a block an hour out in your diary and just join a Zoom from the comfort of your own home. It's it's so much easier for for, for people to engage in you know these the, the grass is greener on the other side, right? So we've all got to be very mindful um, of how much choice uh, your employees have in in terms of where they can take their skill sets, how quickly they can <laughs> they can find and take those skill sets elsewhere um and you know i think this this sort of you know the 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 the, the world we live in right now with that that sort of instant gratification right you can log on to netflix you can binge watch a whole series in 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 a night you can go onto amazon one click buy something it's there the next day people don't have to wait for stuff anymore so um i would say if you, you know, for the people that are kind of, yeah, we're, we've sort of got some engagement, but we could be doing a bit better. What, what are some like super quick wins, right? What are some things that you can do in your organization that will make uh, an impact quickly? If you're not sure, ask, right? I think one of the things that we forget about a lot at the moment, and this is, you know, around, this doesn't just cover engagement, right? I think this is to do with everything. How much time do we want our people to spend in the office? You know, um, we're, we're, there's a lot of theory, you know, what's the best setup, this, that, and the other. Some companies are, you know, we've seen it in the news. Some companies are saying, we're making our employees do this, and then it's backfiring. Like, what's the, what's the mistake they're making? I think it's not asking. You're... We talk about that balance of power you 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 should you should go to every company is going to be different everyone has different expectations go to the people that work in your organization and ask them what they want and then make sure that you actually <laughs> act on what it is that they're telling you because that's the biggest way to drive that motivation and engagement right if they feel that they're being listened to you've 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 you've, you've overcome half the problem and even if what they ask for is something that you can't deliver quickly, the fact that you know that that, that they may want it, whatever it is, you, you've opened that line of communication, right? You've opened that dialogue to turn back around and say, we hear you. It, it's a quick fix. It could be a quick fix. So we're doing this or this is going to take us some more time. So what we're going to do as an organization is be transparent with you, report back on a on a semi-frequent basis or, or, or whatever as to how we're doing and what we're doing to try and meet the needs that, that you've given us. So, um, you know, I think that's it, right? People just want to be, I think more than anything right now, people just want to be heard. They want to feel that their employer understands them, that they're being listened to. Everybody's experience of the last 18 months, two years is going to be vastly different. With so many of our people being at home, we lose that connection to kind of what's going on in their lives, right? Some of those relationships that you may have built with your team members that people may have had with their managers may have dissipated somewhat, right, from being at home for, for, for two years. So rebuilding that, um, it, it's, it's an easy way to, to even just start the conversation around engagement or, or make it a little bit better. Um, like I say, if, if they feel that they're being listened to, you're gonna you're gonna stop people from, um, or potentially stop as many people from uh, from wanting to walk out the door. Perfect. Yeah. Th thanks, Mark. Um, we've unfortunately nearly come up to the the end of our time. Um, so yeah, there there are a couple of questions that we're not gonna get to, but I think some of them were answered um, throughout. So you anticipated the questions even before people asked. Uh, Janice asked around um are there kind of quick surefire ways to get employees engaged so yeah that, that that whole thing about just asking um employees in in the first instance is is a uh, is a great answer there uh, we will follow up with uh, some answers to your other uh, questions as well um and you will all have the the link to 
um, watch the webinar again and share it with your colleagues. Um, and we absolutely encourage you to do so. Um, so I think on, on, on that note, if there's, if there's anything else you want to add, um, David and Mark, just from my side, I just want to thank everybody um, that joined today. And um, yeah, as I said, we can follow up with the, with the links to the webinars and we'll also um, throw in some other useful resources and tips as well. Yeah, that's great. Look, all I'd uh, add there, Freddie, is that, uh, that if uh, if people have liked what they've heard, certainly from the from the learning part, uh, which is um, echoing what Mark said, if uh, if you want to engage uh, employees uh, in conversations about what it is that they're looking for uh, in order to achieve their career goals, then look, that's that's what 360 Learning uh, is all about, as well as connecting those who need to know with those who uh, who already know within your organisation in a way that is uh, uh, leverages smart uh, modern technology. Yeah, I think, um, as I say, I, lo I mean, I'm looking at some of the questions, right? I think a lot of them, as you say, we kind of covered already. Um, and uh, yeah, I th there's the, the theme is just to, to, yeah, like I said earlier, right? Just to, to, to ask, right? If you want to think about how do you start getting your employees engaged, be transparent. If you understand, if you, if you think that you've not been doing it, tell people that you understand that maybe you've not been doing it right I, I, everyone can see through this like this like, dishonesty right or, or not being transparent so um you know, yeah just just be honest with people right there's nothing wrong with holding your hands up and saying guys we understand that we may not be perfect here but we want to be better we we know that there are some things we need to do and we want you to tell us or help us understand, um, you know, where we can, where we can be going. Um, and I won't plug Bob, that's too much. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try and sit here and now sell it, but you know, we do have, uh, we do have a great platform for, uh, <laughs> uh, surveying, uh, your, 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 your employees and, and, you know, um, like, like David said, like a good piece of tech can certainly help. So, uh, if, um, if people want to know more, uh, click the link. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So thanks so much, uh, David and Mark. Some really, really great discussion today. And uh, yeah, everybody enjoy the rest of your day.